So first thing that I'm working on here is these um, asparagus wrapped in bacon and those are really simple, really, really easy. Cook really, really quickly, about 10 minutes towards the end on the, um, either direct or indirect um, and those will, those will cook nicely. You don't want to have them with too much flame, but I'll show you those cooking. So they're really simple. They're just individually wrapped and as we tip for these, I get these American style bacon unsmoked rashers from Lidl actually. Um and they are perfect because look how fine look how fine they are. You don't have a you don't have too much to cook, so and they don't they're not too fiddly. Once you get them sort of hooked round, then you can just twist the tip of the asparagus and that should come round. Of course this one's gonna be difficult. Um but just twist this but the asparagus and it just spirals it round you just want to get it well well wrapped so it doesn't fall off mid grill so next up what i'm doing is just um scoring this um fat cap of the bacana and that really just stops it from um curling up so just to be score bisecting just across into almost that kind of diamond formation that you'd see on a christmas ham you don't want to go too deep and too far into the meat here, so you're just running the knife just across. It should slide through it's sharp enough reasonably easily. And then what I have made up is a bit of a rub here. So I've got equal parts of coarse ground pepper, sea salt and garlic powder. So classic SPG rub. So I'll bring you over just a see that one we have the, i like to use the maldron sea salt um garlic powder and coarse ground black pepper there so i'm gonna mix that up and then just apply liberally across there you see the section of the kind of fat cap both to the sides and underneath and the one thing you do want to keep way eye on whenever you are cooking the can of, is you want to almost mark the grain of the meat because whenever you see there the, the muscles running across that way. So whenever I come to slice cook at the end, I want to be cutting across that grain and that gives you a much more tender bite. So really, really important. Otherwise it'll be chewy. So you only make that mistake once and it makes the world of difference to this steak. Okay, so we're gonna apply a rub just to the meat, and I always go quite um, heavy with my rubs, um, just to try and maximize flavor. Um, you, you can buy this one pre-made, this SPG, but it's not exactly hard to put together yourself, so no reason you can't uh, generate it yourself there, so. Just give it a good, start to get that flavor in, and help it along. Perfect, so just turn that up again and that'll be ready for going on to the barbecue in direct. Um, next thing we're gonna do is um, show you how to make the homemade chimichurri. Okay, so first things first with the um, chimichurri, I have a pestle and water and I've put some garlic cloves in, usually about three or four plenty. We tip for you is to put some um, salt flakes on to that before you grind and press up or grind in the pestle and water. It really brings out the flavour of the garlic. So that's your first step. We're going to grind that, um, grind it down into a paste. Okay, so that's the consistency you're looking for there, right down into a paste. Got a knife work to go now. We have um, our herbs here and a chili. So we've got flat leaf parsley. You can leave the stalks on if you like a little bit of bite in your um, chimichurri, which I do. I have some freshly grown from the garden oregano, but you can use dried as a substitute. Some people add a little bit of coriander in, but um, traditional sort of Argentinian recipes, it, it does kind of vary. Some leave it in, some leave it out, and you'll also see it sometimes with a chopped shallot as well. But this is a combination that I use and this is what I like. 
and we also have a chili, red chili here. So DC that and chop it down fine here. So do that prep and then bring you back in. So just finishing up here with our last um, mic. Okay, so in with our oregano, in with our parsley. Okay, a bit of that. And then in with our red chilies. And obviously if you were Adding in your chopped shallot or whatever that goes in at this stage too. Okay, to that I'll add my tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Just bring some lovely sour notes. A little bit more. And then in with the first good glug of olive oil. Just let that settle down and then we'll give it a bit of a combine here. See how it's looking. So you want to give those all a good, good mix. So you can see they're roughly chopped, so there is still a bite. Some people blend this, but I prefer it, um, to have a bit of a bite. So you want to combine just that um, garlic that's at the bottom in and let's get the flavours combined there so I'm going to carry a little bit more olive oil than that so, bring it in. so the final bit of prep I'm going to do for this meal is I'm going to make some Hasselback potatoes so I'm going to show you a quick wee hack and I'm sure you've maybe come across it before but just in case you haven't um, baby potatoes of skewers, metal skewers, just place those side by side and the baby potato in the middle and obviously whenever your knife gets down to the bottom it'll not cut right through the potato so it's perfect for making Hasselbacks so I can just take that right down and know that it's not gonna cut through the bottom of the potato It'll give you good knife nice indentation So we'll work my way through these and then I'm going to cook these in a cast iron. So just showing you that technique one last time there. So um, lined up between the skewers and then we should be able just to quickly move along the potato going right down to those metal skewers without the danger of the Hasselback potato splitting at the bottom there which it hasn't done. But you get obviously oh, beautiful and whenever those cook you'll see those curl out a little bit and then we'll be able to brush with a little bit of butter. Okay so that's our prep for this cook pretty much complete so I'm gonna be heading out to the barbecue just to um, fire up an indirect cooking zone which I'll show you in a second here and Get, I'm aiming to get the temperature of the grill up to around 200 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, sorry. Okay, so as I was saying, it's really windy out here, so excuse the wind if you get blown away here and can't hear too much. So we're going to set up on the Classic 2, Pro Series 2, and I have just set up a charcoal basket, pretty much even there, put the divider in, probably don't really need it. Um, I'm going to light that up and get a good fire going, and as I say, get the grill up to around that kind of 200 and um, just slightly under for the barbecue roasting zone um, smart grid system we are going to set up as an indirect area so we have kind of the half and half so we've got half moon deflector plate in there we have the drip tray just to catch any nasties or fat just to try and catch those to keep them off the coals so it doesn't get too smoky um, this area will be completely and heat coming up there so it'll give us a nice grilling space here 
and this area here is where we're going to cook our pecana. It will um, allow us to get an indirect um, cook for this piece of meat. And then towards the end, we're going to bring in the grill extender up over the top. And I will probably raise the pecana up on top of it and then have our potatoes or Hasselback potatoes. I envisage the pecana usually takes around 40 minutes to cook roughly. I'm going to use some probes so obviously if we cook into temp. See how so it goes. A couple of our favourite accessories here. We've got our monolighter and also our monolith, monolith thermolith, which is the um, barbecue probes that we're going to be using to keep an eye on the temperature today. So we'll get stuck in. So we have our thermolith here and we're propping the probe into the thickest part of the meat. And that's going to let us keep an eye on the temperature mid cook without having to open. So we have our red onion on direct heat. We have now have our pecana sitting on the grill extender above the Hasselback potatoes. And now we've moved our red onions off the direct heat and now I have our red peppers just grilling. Hasselback potatoes are coming along there. I've actually flipped them there to get a little bit of colour. Okay, so last part of our Hasselback potatoes, um, I like to drizzle them with a wee bit of Parmesan and leave them in for the last 10 minutes. So they're, half, they're pretty much there, but this just makes all the difference. It elevates the dish. And then back into the grill at 200 underneath that pecana. Okay, so pretty much there, we are reading 44 degrees. We're looking for that to be 52 degrees internal on the pecana. Um, we have our red peppers there, had those slightly down in the grill, but I brought them up a wee bit because they're charring up a little bit. Um, we have our red onions that are nicely um, coming along there. And underneath we have our Parmesan Hasselback potatoes. So last thing we need to add in there is our asparagus wrap with bacon so i'm going to leave that till about another couple of minutes and then i'm going to pop those just in that direct heat so i'm going to where there's space and that will be one full grill of tasty tasty food for a little bit of blush there and it should be medium rare which we're starting to get my bring across our chili cherry So this is how we ended up and I'm pretty sure you'll agree, service to anyone, they're going to be pretty impressed, right?